One of the most stacked fight cards ever put together in UFC history is in the books. UFC 300 was stacked from top to bottom with amazing fights with the UFC wanting to usher in the new era of the 300s with a bang. This card was headlined by some huge bouts with the light heavyweight title being defended, the strawweight title on the line and even the BMF title on the line. So did UFC 300 live up to its hype and was it a card worthy of ushering in the new and the next era of the UFC? This is the fight franchise and the recap and review of UFC 300. This card was so stacked and started with an amazing early prelim opener of former flyweight champ Davison Figueredo taking on former bantamweight champion Cody Garbrandt. In a competitive bout across two rounds, Cody was doing well on the feet with his speed and striking and Figueredo starting to grapple and have success with his grappling. More grappling took place in the second round where Figueredo was smothering Garbrandt and as Garbrandt tried to stand up, he would have his back taken and choked out by Figgy in a great win and fight to start the card. The next fight, the only man to fight on UFC 100, 200 and now 300, Jim Miller took on Bobby Green, where they had a fun fight on the feet where Green was the slicker and the better striker on the feet, piecing up Miller where he left his face a bloody mess. This took place over three rounds where at the end of the fight, Green had Miller on skates, but he would hear the final horn. Green won the great unanimous decision and it was great to see Jim Miller compete on this card and have such a brilliant historical achievement in the UFC. Jessica Andrade took on Marina Rodriguez in a fun scrap where both women fought back and forth on the feet and on the ground, where it was a close fight where both ladies had success where Andrade was the more damaging on the feet but Rodriguez threatened with submissions. The fight was close and a split decision win for Andrade. The next fight Jalen Turner took on Hanato Moicano in an epic clash where Jalen Turner had brilliant success on the feet in round 1 but Moicano had great success on the ground and towards the end of the first round Turner dropped Moicano and looked like he had the fight won but walked away while he dropped him instead of trying to secure the TKO. The second round more success on the feet for Turner until Moicano secured the takedown and smothered Turner and was able to batter him on the ground and secure the amazing TKO with ground and pound. In a fight he was very much at one point almost out in. A great fight and a brilliant way to end the early prelims. The prelims began with Sadiq Youssef taking on fan favourite Diego Lopez. In typical Lopez fashion the fight was all action from the get go with both guys trading on the feet with Lopez in close landing an uppercut to drop Youssef who survived and got back up only to take another huge uppercut and be finished and TKO'd in 1 minute and 30 seconds. A great fight and performance by Lopez who kicked off the prelims in epic fashion. A huge UFC debut next with Kayla Harrison starting in the UFC and taking on Holly Holm in Harrison's bantamweight debut. Both girls fought on the feet at range until they got in close and Holm would get a takedown against Kayla only for her to get back up and work a throw on Holm and spend round one dominating and throwing elbows on Holm. The second round Harrison did more of the same dominating and getting the takedown and pummeling Holm until she had her flattened out and Harrison secured the rear naked choke to get the brilliant win in her debut. I don't think it will be long until Harrison has a belt around her waist. Next, the featherweight debut for Aljamain Sterling where he was taking on Calvin Cater. The most boring fight on the card where Aljo dominated all three rounds with his grappling. It was a statement and a great win for Aljo who did what he needed to do to get the win and establish himself as a potential contender in the division. It was just a shame it was a snooze fest and he couldn't secure a finish either. The final fight of the prelims was Yuri Prohaska taking on Alexander Rakic. Rakic had an excellent first round after his long layoff where he would land calf kicks to compromise Yuri who just fought through the pain where Alexander did the better on the feet over the first round. Rakic would come out for the second round and kept on landing and piecing up Yuri on the feet who went forward with reckless abandonment where he trusted in his chin and pressured Rakic and wobbled him and when Rakic hit the mat Yuri would follow and smash him until he put him out to secure the brilliant win. Yuri fought like a madman who had no care about what was going to happen in the Fight. It was excellent viewing and an amazing fight which waked us all up after the snooze fest before it. Bo Nickel would open the main card against Cody Brundage where Cody came out like a madman throwing flying knees and huge punches until they clinched and the fight went to the ground with Bo on top controlling with strikes and threatening with submissions with Bo comfortably winning round 1. The second round Bo got the fight to the ground whereas Brundage was trying to escape, gave up his back and Nickel would secure the submission win to start off the main card. The next fight a hugely competitive bout between Armin Sarukian and Charles Oliveira where straight off the bat in the first 30 seconds Oliveira was looking for a guillotine but Sarukian somehow survived. They fought the fight mainly on the ground switching positions where it seemed the first round Oliveira was the more threatening and did the better work. 
The second round they fought on the feet but Armin got the takedown and dominated on the ground landing huge elbows. Oliveira did try and threaten with submissions but it was too late in the round. With it seemingly 1-1 going into the last round, both guys came out cautious, where Armin got the takedown and would land ground and pound, however towards the end of the third round, Charles would try and secure a dash choke until the end of the fight, where it looked like he had it in but Armin survived until the end of the round. The decision went to Armin Sarukin which was a fair result and it was a fun and competitive MMA bout. Next, the BMF belt was on the line, with Justin Gaethje taking on Max Holloway in an epic clash on the feet. In a fight where many people thought Justin Gaethje had Max Holloway outgunned in the power department, Max did brilliant with his measured boxing, coming in and out landing great strikes on the feet, where he did the better across the first round, until the end of the first round, where he landed a spinning back kick, which severely damaged Gaethje's nose. Justin was smashing leg kicks at Max who fought through the paint and kept fighting a brilliant fight. The second round, both men traded on the feet, where Max did more of the great work he did in round one but did land a few unfortunate eye pokes but he did seem to steal the second round anyway. The third round Max again was the slicker on the feet and dominated and won that round as well to take him up 3-0 in the fight. Gaethje did the better in the fourth round and stole back the round securing a knockdown and being better matching Holloway on the feet. Max would come back and dominate the fifth round where he wobbled Gaethje piecing him up on the feet landing a massive flurry of punches and when the final 10 seconds rang as per Max Holloway style he asked Gaethje to trade in the center of the octagon where he KO'd and flatlined Gaethje with one second left in an unbelievable and epic UFC moment and easily the front runner for KO of the year. Holloway is the new BMF a top contender in two divisions, a lock for KO of the year and an unbelievable performance and fight from Max Holloway who won 600k in bonuses which was well deserved. The next fight Zhang Wei Li defended her title against Yan Xiaonan. This was a fun fight and a hard act to follow after what Max Holloway had done, where Yan was great on the feet rocking Zhang but the fight in the first round went to the ground, where Zhang secured the rear naked choke and at the end of the round when the horn went it seemed like Yan was out but got back up and went back to her stool half asleep. The second round Zhang did great in the grappling dominating the second round and battering Xiaonan, where Zhang was 2-0 up with a potential 10-8. Yan Xiaonan rallied and started piecing up a tire Wei Li on the feet, dropping her on multiple occasions and would steal back a brilliant third round. The final two rounds, Zhang would grapple and use her strengths on the ground to win a decision in a fun fight with some real cool moments and credit to Yan Xiaonan who showed some real grit and toughness in the fight. The final fight of the night was Alex Pereira defending his title against former champion who never lost his title Jamal Hill. Both guys traded leg kicks on the feet and strikes on the feet in a measured first round where Hill was beginning to throw his brilliant kicks where he went up high and then after went low and got the cup of Pereira and Herb Dean was going to intervene and call a timeout where Pereira stopped him mid sequence and told him to step back and continued fighting where he threw a left hook which sent Hill crashing to the canvas and followed with ground and pound to secure the brilliant KO and an epic KO to to win and defend his title and end off a brilliant night of fights in epic fashion. This fight card was unbelievably hyped with so many huge stars on the card and former champions from the early prelims all the way up to the main event. Yes there was dud moments, a bit of a boring fight with Sterling versus Cater but the rest of the card had amazing and fun action. Figueredo secured a great submission, Green and Miller put on a fun scrap, Andrade and Rodriguez was a competitive and fun bout, Renato Moicano secured an amazing comeback win, Diego Lopez got an epic Epic KO in 1 minute 30 seconds, Kayla Harrison had a successful and epic debut, Yuri Prohaska had an epic clash with Alexander Rakic and got a wicked finish, Bo Nickel got the sub and finish even if the fight was boring, a competitive bout with close submissions with Armin Sarukian and Charles Oliveira, Max Holloway delivered a performance moment and KO for the ages which will be remembered forever, Zhang Wei Li and Yan Xiaonan had a fun bout with some great moments and Pereira secured one of the coldest and most dope KOs in UFC history. So much amazing action and fun moments. If we are going to grade UFC 300 it gets an A+. What a way to start the 300s era and this night was an epic night of fights in UFC's history who should look to do more super cards like this in the future. Credit to all the fighters who helped put on an epic show and performances and fights, especially Max Holloway and Alex Pereira who stole the show. Good luck to Alexander Pantoja and Steve Ursek who have to follow this card but we do have some huge fight cards around the corner including the return of Conor McGregor. Did you enjoy the video? Let us know down in the comments below. What did you think of UFC 300 and do you think it's the best card in UFC history? Put that down in the comments below. And what would you grade UFC 300 if you had to give it a grade? Put that down in the comments below. Leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe for more MMA and fight content coming soon. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you in the next one.